Seeking wisdom is like walking a quiet path, alone but filled with rewards. Think of insights as seeds. We plant them in silence and watch them grow, hidden from prying eyes. This is a lesson from the Stoics who believed that not every thought needs to be shared. The Stoics treasured their life lessons and achievements. They knew that sharing too much could weaken their true meaning. Every happiness and pain was a part of their private story, experienced fully in each moment. When we share everything without thinking, we risk losing depth in our lives. Like a flower that fades when touched too much, our personal growth needs space, away from others' opinions. Keeping some thoughts to ourselves doesn't hide them. It protects their true value from being changed by others. Real growth is about choosing wisely, what to share and what to keep just for ourselves. In a world that loves to show off everything, it takes bravery to hold back. But when we protect our deepest truths, we give them the perfect place to grow strong and show our best selves. We're going to talk about 13 things that are best kept to yourself. These are special lessons from the ancient Stoic philosophers. Stick with me until the end of the video to learn why they thought some thoughts should stay private. These lessons can really lift your spirits if you keep them close. Knowing when to share and when to stay quiet is a big part of living a good life. This video might just change the way you think about sharing and silence. These lessons promise to nourish your spirits if sheltered carefully within. Number one, don't talk about your achievements. Do you constantly tell people about your awards or titles? The Stoics saw this as wasted effort. Real achievement comes from inner growth. Trophies collect dust. Character endures. The philosopher Lao Tzu said, those who know do not speak. Those who speak do not know. Talking too much about accomplishments feeds pride and blinds us to areas needing improvement. It becomes about inflating image over developing substance. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Roman Emperor, advised keeping achievements private. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to. With the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. Imagine achievement as air in a balloon. If we continually let air out to impress others, the balloon deflates. But if we conserve the air, the balloon expands. Goals reached quietly have the greatest impact on our character. For example, if you win employee of the month at work, you'll want to announce it online so everyone can congratulate you. But the Stoics would say real achievement comes from consistently doing great work, not chasing shallow praise. Don't drain helium from your balloon just to make noise. Take pride internally in a job well done. Keep your sense of accomplishment untarnished by publicity. Point two, don't discuss unresolved challenges. Have you ever shared an unsolved problem then regretted it? Stoics knew announcing unmet challenges makes us seem like victims, not victors. They saw life's ups and downs as training for the soul. Falling is normal during training, but wise students keep setbacks private to stay focused on progress. Thomas Edison said, I have not failed 10,000 times. I have succeeded in proving 10,000 ways will not work. The Stoic Seneca stated, Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. Challenges are meant to fortify us, not defeat us. Imagine challenges as weights. Attempting to lift real weights strengthens us. Attempting to lift rubber weights hurts confidence. Keep some defeats private to protect your spirit while working to improve. Use hardships to build mental muscle. For example, you may want to vent to friends about a difficult client at work, but Stoics would advise handling the issue privately and moving forward. Don't dwell on what's not working. Focus your energy on developing solutions. Don't let defeats define you. See them as stepping stones to growth. Let difficulties make you mentally stronger. Number three, don't boast about good deeds. Have you ever donated anonymously? This may satisfy more than seeking credit. Stoics saw virtue as its own reward. A candle gives light silently. Good deeds done modestly have the most nobility. Mahatma Gandhi said, The smallest act of kindness is worth more than the grandest intention. The Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius stated, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. 
Be one. Do not speak about virtue. Live it fully. Imagine kindness as a flowing river. When the river is obstructed by rocks of pride and diversion, it stagnates. But when left to flow freely, the river generously nourishes all around it. Deeds done for their own sake, without wanting applause, make the biggest impact. Stoics saw fame and fortune as fleeting. They focused inward on cultivating virtue, wisdom, and self-discipline. External rewards meant little compared to the joys of a principled life. For instance, if you volunteer at a homeless shelter each weekend, don't post about it on social media. The act of giving your time matters more than any praise you could receive. Let the river flow discreetly. Take joy in helping others without needing attention. Do good works because your conscience compels it, not to enhance your reputation. The quiet dignity of anonymous generosity expresses the essence of virtue. It flows from an inner fullness rather than outward thirst for validation. By keeping good deeds private, we nourish our spirit and touch others through purity of motive. Number four, don't discuss grudges. Holding grudges poisons us, not those we resent. Stoics knew resentments imprison us. Forgiveness liberates us to live fully in the present. Nelson Mandela said, resentment is like drinking poison and hoping it will kill your enemies. Marcus Aurelius stated, the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Resentment only degrades us, not our perceived foes. Imagine resentment as a backpack full of heavy rocks. At first, it feels weightless. But as more rocks of memory and anger pile in, it weighs us down. Carrying this burden affects no one but us. Dropping resentment lightens our load. Forgiveness is choosing to take off the backpack. The Stoics saw resentment as irrational. We suffer most from it, while the target may be oblivious. They advised looking inward instead. How can we improve ourselves rather than blame others? For example, if a friend betrays your trust, you may replay the hurt for years. But clinging to anger only hurts you. Stoics advise understanding their actions, forgiving and moving forward in peace. Don't pick up that painful backpack. Seek first to understand, then keep walking toward the light. Forgiveness demonstrates strength and self-control. It may take great courage, but freeing ourselves from bitterness brings serenity. The Stoics nurtured this inner peace rather than wasting energy on vengeance. In the wise words of Nelson Mandela, resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies. Don't poison yourself. Number five, keep your dreams private. Your dreams live vibrantly in your mind, where nothing can disturb them. But spoken too soon, they may be stunted by skepticism. Stoics protected tender dreams by keeping them private. Mark Twain said, Keep away from people who try to belittle your ambitions. Small people always do that, but the really great make you feel that you, too, can become great. Marcus Aurelius advised nurturing grand visions patiently. Do not act as if you had 10,000 years to throw away. Death stands at your elbow. Be good for something while you live, and it is in your power. Imagine dreams as fragile saplings needing careful nurturing. Planted in poor soil of doubt, they likely wither. But allowed to take root in rich soil of belief, they can grow strong. Only voice dreams when resilient enough to withstand cynicism, when their roots are deep and unshakable. The Stoics understood that voicing goals prematurely could expose them to the storms of ridicule and misunderstanding. But given space to grow untainted, our dreams can flourish into their greatest potential. For example, you may aspire to start a nonprofit one day, but if you announce it prematurely, friends may poke holes discouraging you. Keep details private until you've developed a solid plan. Protect your sapling until it's mature enough to withstand gusts of skepticism. Let it extend roots in the rich dirt of your vision. Tend it patiently until ready to bear fruit. By being judicious and sharing dreams, we create the optimal conditions for them to crystallize into reality. The seeds of greatness need nurturing in the fertile soil of discretion. Number six, don't discuss your next moves. Think of a chess grandmaster hiding their strategy 
Their opponent cannot thwart their plans. Stoics knew that keeping others guessing gave them greater power. Bruce Lee said, The successful warrior is the average man, with laser-like focus. The Stoic Seneca stated, Nothing is ours except time. We were entrusted by nature with the ownership of this single thing, so fleeting and slippery that anyone who will can oust us from possession. Use your precious time wisely by staying discreet. Imagine goals as intricate domino displays. If the first tiles are visible, opponents can interfere. But kept hidden, an impressive sequence can be unveiled. Don't reveal your opening moves. Share your vision when you're ready to start the chain reaction. The Stoics understood that broadcasting plans too widely could dilute their power and expose them to criticism. But by keeping strategies private, we retain control of our precious time on Earth. For example, if you're job hunting, don't broadcast that you're unhappy in your role. Keep your next steps private so you can make a strategic change on your own terms. Don't let anyone block your dominoes from falling flawlessly into place when the time is right. Mastering secrecy means mastering your destiny. Let life's plan unfold according to your vision, not the whims of others. Number seven, don't admit self-doubt. Admitting doubts may seem courageous, but it can drain resolve. Stoics examined doubts privately rather than amplifying them. A lighthouse beaming confidently guides ships best. Imagine doubts as fog obscuring but navigable. Shining your inner light burns away fog. Projecting steady assurance keeps you moving forward. For instance, if giving a big work presentation, don't repeatedly question your qualifications to colleagues. Acknowledge normal doubts privately, then focus on developing your skills and maintaining calm confidence in public. Don't let fog divert you from your goals. Let the light within guide your way through uncertainty into clear skies ahead. Stoicism teaches us the power of internal control and resilience. As Seneca once said, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This highlights the Stoic belief in confronting internal fears and doubts, not by voicing them, but by rationalizing and overcoming them internally. Doubts like shadows grow larger when given attention, but diminish when faced with the light of reason and self-assurance. Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher, advised, confine yourself to the present. This wisdom encourages focusing on the now rather than getting lost in doubts about the future or regrets of the past. By centering on the present task, doubts lose their grip, allowing for a clearer path forward. Remember, as Epictetus stated, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This stoic principle reminds us that while we cannot control external events, we can control our reactions to them, including our doubts. By maintaining a composed and confident demeanor, we navigate through life's uncertainties with a steadier hand. In essence, Stoicism doesn't advocate for the denial of doubts, but rather for their private examination and overcoming. It's about harnessing inner strength and wisdom to navigate through life's foggy moments, keeping your eyes fixed on your goals and letting your inner light guide you. This approach not only strengthens resolve, but also projects an aura of confidence and stability to those around you. Number eight, don't criticize others. Judging others erodes our spirit. Stoics focused first on improving themselves before critiquing others. They saw compassion as uplifting, judgment as draining. The Buddha said, hatred does not cease by hatred, but only by love. This is the eternal rule. Imagine each criticism as a stone cast into a peaceful pond. Disturbing the calm helps no one. Kindness tosses a pebble of empathy, creating ripples of positivity. Seeking the best in others keeps the surface still. For example, it's easy to gossip about others' fashion or relationships, but Stoics advise looking inward first. How can you improve yourself rather than worrying about others' lives? Don't throw stones, spread ripples of compassion, lift others up instead of bringing them down. Number nine. Don't discuss time spent alone. Solitude nourishes. Loud voices drown out the soul. 
Stoics embraced alone time to hear inner wisdom. Florence Nightingale said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuse. Imagine solitude as a sheltering garden. When constantly exposed to harsh elements, plants shrivel up, but in a greenhouse they flourish untouched. Alone time cultivates self-knowledge. We reconnect with our true self in the stillness. For example, you may value occasional weekends solo to reflect and recharge, but don't feel the need to fill friends in on how you spent this time. Treasure your garden of solitude and let its insights bloom privately. Solitude is not emptiness, but fullness of spirit. Number 10. Don't analyze unlearned lessons. Do you examine every scar or move on having learned? Stoics saw failures as teachers, not tormentors. Dwelling on them became excuses. Each mistake was a lesson then released. Henry Ford said, Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Imagine failures as wrong turns while navigating. Obsessing over a wrong turn prevents reaching our destination. Acknowledge then, let go of the mistake, to refocus on the road ahead. The path forward matters more than the stumble behind. For example, don't endlessly rehash a failed relationship. Learn your lessons, then direct energy to personal growth and meeting new people. Don't let setbacks become your identity when you have so much more to offer. Keep your eyes on the open road before you. Number 11. Keep your inner self private. Your essence need not be defined for others. Keeping some mystery allows you to unfold naturally, outside expectations. Stoics knew no one fully reveals themselves. Oscar Wilde said, Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Imagine your identity as a budding flower. If constantly handled and inspected, it cannot blossom freely. But given privacy, its true colors emerge vibrantly. Your essence thrives through silent growth rather than public scrutiny. Keep your deepest petals concealed. For instance, avoid oversharing personal struggles online. Give yourself space to resolve challenges privately. You don't owe the world full disclosure. Let your flower bloom organically in its own time and own way. Number 12. Help others discreetly. Good done discreetly benefits others and ourselves. Stoics served without calling attention. Anne Frank said, No one has ever become poor by giving. Imagine helping others as scattering seeds, tiny anonymous actions multiplying. A single seed can grow into an abundant harvest. When we serve without fanfare, our efforts multiply like seeds on the wind. The ripple effects spread quietly. For example, pay for a stranger's coffee anonymously or volunteer for a charity without posting selfies. The act of giving matters more than any praise. Scatter your seeds generously but silently. Watch them grow into a vibrant garden. Number 13. Master yourself before advising others. Advising others is tempting, but Stoics focused first on leading themselves. They guided their own ships before steering others. An anchored boat goes nowhere. Jim Rohn said, Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Imagine your mind as your boat and thoughts as its crew, while turbulent waters rock you. Focus on steadying your own craft before attempting to rescue others. Master your mind by anchoring stable thoughts. Then you can model resilience for those lost at sea. For example, don't give parenting advice if your own children are unruly, or don't instruct on relationships while you are struggles. Work on self-mastery first, then humbly share wisdom earned through experience. Don't try to guide other ships before mastering your own navigation. Lead by example. While louder paths demand conformity, the Stoic road values self-mastery. Walking it requires tuning out noise and listening within. But for those seeking true fulfillment, no other trail leads there. Will you dare to walk your own path? The rewards of mindful living are waiting for you.